Hi everybody, Paul McFarland here again talking about Shia Day, but today just a short, maybe unnecessary, but I always love doing it, a love letter to Shia Day as in Shia Cloud. <laughs> it's all about this picture, which was taken um, <clears throat> as part of a CA story about Apple and Shia Day. Great picture of Look at that. Look at that. We and say, look at that. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Now the picture, because I know this picture, has one more person to the other side, and that is Steve Hayden, who left, of course, you know, but um, was so instrumental at that time. But this cropped in for this beautiful shot, and I didn't know any better, I'd say Norm Seep shot this, but I could be wrong. Um, Jay and Lee. And I think what I see in those expressions <clears throat> is a sense of recognition and love I want to talk about for a moment. Mm. <clears throat> Lee, who I know mm, even more than, than I do about Jay, has always was on a search early in his career when he worked at NWA, or, you know, LA office, and he caught what Doyle Day and Bernbach had been doing in New York. And he knew he wanted to work with people who really, really believed in doing the best creative work because he had that desire. And he learned very clearly at NWA or in LA that the management there had, had completely different <coughs> values and concerns from the uh, creative people. And he was searching, searching, and he suspected and thought from what he saw of that young agency, Shia Day, that had been open for, oh, two years, two and a half years before he finally broke through, he knew he found his home. And he found his home, and the fact that he kept getting promoted was fine because he started to believe in himself more and more and realized he'd found his emotional and career home. He never pursued, you know, the raises, but of course they came and they came and they came because of what Jay thought of him. So again, Lee found his home, and in Jay Shia, uh, he found the, the fire, the passion, the swagger and the bravado that he knew could fuel his greatest dreams. And in Guy Day, he found a quieter, certainly more introverted person who understood the quality of the work mattered most and not growth. Uh, Lee had a little bit of both. He wanted to you know, see how far they could grow and he believed he could have an idea and create an idea in the staff that anyone could buy and could solve the problems. He was proved wrong a few times, you know, because now we, clients aren't always believers. So Lee had a constant optimism and a belief uh, when it came time for the sale, of course, you know, he realized he was getting a little bit older and, you know, he realized that it's time for him to cash in and he never really got paid as much as he could have. He got offers to go all kinds of places over the years and never took them because he thought, why would I leave this perfect place? And but eventually you get a bit older and you realize, hey, I have things to want to do, houses I want to build, boats I want to own, a Catalina place I want to have, etc. And, you know, you, you believe you're worth it and it should be worth it. And, of course, he was able to cash out handsomely. Well done, Leyland. And for Jay, that smile, that beautiful smile here, is just so cool because it's that, look at that, look at that expression. It's just life, absolute life there. What Jay realized that he had found his warrior you know, Jay, like um, Steve Jobs, was they were two of a kind in a way. I would have liked to have been in a room with just the two of them and see what would happen. But neither of them are with us anymore, so I can imagine. But I could really imagine uh, Jay seeing in Lee a tool for his dreams. In other words, if he wanted to push the uh, the staff and the clients to greater heights, he knew Lee could do it. And even when they fought and argued, because, of course, they both did because they both cared. And they still do care, Mr. Clow, I hope, even though I hope he's not thinking about it much anymore. 
And Jay just saw, he kind of unloosed, took the shackles off his limitations to know, I've got someone here who has taste. I've got someone here who's dedicated. Got someone here who will work the hours. Got someone here who will actually push me and anything I want to dream, he can make it happen and will make it happen. It's like when you're a manager and you have the right star player in your team, right? You know, eventually make him captain and maybe become a, a coach later on. It's that recognition and that joy, that joyful recognition that you found your perfect match for each. Their dreams could be made real because someone who owned the agency, run the agency the way he thought, supported the work, and someone who had dreams for the agency, that they could make them real and make them even greater than they ever thought. That's like when you fall in love with the right person. You don't fall. You rise in love. You find the actual life partner who marries with you because you want the same things and you make each other greater. You make each other greater. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk about. Don't settle for a partnership where you don't see the same thing. Don't settle for a life relationship, a career uh, relationship where you don't light the fire under each other. Yeah. As great as um, Guy Day was in his quiet, disciplined, beautiful way, Jay and Lee, sort of like a flower that found the right soil to grow in and a gardener that watered and pruned. Thank you, Morton J. Shiat. And thank you, Leyland Clow. Thank you, Guy Day. Thank you, Shia Day.